ninth lecture on Revelation. Today's text will begin with Revelation chapter 9, verse 7. The fifth trumpet plague appears beginning from chapter 9, verse 1. There is an abyss here. There are also locusts. These locusts torment the people. Today's passage is Revelation chapter 9, verse 7. Read verse 7. The locusts looked like horses prepared for battle. On their heads they wore something like crowns of gold, and their faces resembled human faces. Joel chapter 2, verse 4. War horses gallop swiftly with strength. They are capable of spreading out extensively. Therefore, this also represents the movement of apostasy. Likewise, many people are deceived. This is because lies deceive people. In addition, these locusts are murderous. Thus, when traitors of religion attempt to kill people, they torment and deceive them. Hence, this symbolizes the idea of war, a religious war. It says that they received crowns of gold. It says that they wore something like crowns of gold. This represents false glory. It is simply pretending to be glorious. Therefore, this is religious traitors boasting of fake glory. Also, it says that their faces were similar to faces of humans. This means that they have their own wisdom. It means they possess wisdom. However, this is not true wisdom. This is to deceive people with lies. This is to deceive people with falseness. For example, there is heaven and hell in the Bible. However, some people teach wrongly to others there is no hell. Therefore, this is false wisdom. This is to deceive people with lies. Thus, they destroy the spirits of people and torment them. Read verse 8. Their hair was like woman's hair, and their teeth were like lion's teeth. Here the woman's hair symbolizes glory. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 15. This also represents departing from one's own position. The head of the woman is man. The head of man is Christ. Therefore, this refers to departure from one's position. Also, it says that their teeth were like lion's teeth. This refers to something cruel, violent, and frightening. This speaks of a brutality that harms the spirits of people. The devil destroys basic order. Heretics slander and destroy the church. They damage the true church with teeth like that of lions. Read verse 9. 
They had breastplates like breastplates of iron, and the sound of their wings was like the thundering of many horses and chariots rushing into battle. They had breastplates of iron. This means that they are armed with ideas and theories. They believe that their own claims are correct. They lack guilt in their consciences. They have neither decency nor shame. They are brazen and shameless. They go against the gospel and destroy the church. The sound of their wings could be heard. They rush forth fearlessly and destroy people. Likewise, the devil's influences go against the movement of the gospel. Meanwhile, this could also symbolize the newest weapons in the last days. Today there are weapons such as helicopters. Think about the helicopter. Even when a helicopter is in mid-air, it can release bullets and bombs as well as missiles. Likewise, this can symbolize the latest weapons. Read verse 10. They had tails and stings like scorpions, and in their tails they had power to torment people for five months. These tails symbolize false prophets who deceive with falseness. They symbolize false prophets who propagate falsehood. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 15. The devil uses his own words to deceive people. He deceives with false words. He attempts to harm the souls of humans. Therefore we must be aware. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 15. These false prophets deceive people's souls with evil ideologies. These are false prophets. Therefore, we must always take caution as to not be deceived by these kinds of people. Here it says that they had the power to torment people for five months. In this, the devil cannot harm us indefinitely. False prophets cannot attain infinite power. The devil's works only occur during God's allowed period of time. The devil can only harm what God allows him to. Verses 11 through 12. They had as king over them the angel of the abyss, whose name in Hebrew is Abaddon and in Greek Apollyon. The first woe is past, two other woes are yet to come. Here, Abaddon and Apollyon are alike in meaning. Both mean one who destroys. The king's name is the one that destroys. In this way, they are destroyers. They destroy the faith of believers and destroy the movement of God's truth. Likewise, weapons of war will exist in various forms in the last days. 
For example, weapons will be created biologically and unleashed. Weapons will also be chemically made and be used to kill people. Read verse, four, verse 13. The sixth angel sounded his trumpet. Here the plague of the sixth trumpet appears. A voice appeared from the four horns of the golden altar before God. This golden altar before God is a place where martyrs reside. Chapter 6 verse 9. One voice comes from the four horns of the golden altar. This is God's answer to the martyrs' appeals. Martyrs go before God's altar and pray immediately after they are martyred. God will hear their prayers and bring judgment upon this sinful world. In addition, Jesus will come again to save believers. Jesus will return to save us believers. Verses 14 through 15. It said to the sixth angel who had the trumpet, Release the four angels who are bound at the great river Euphrates. A great war arises in the Euphrates River. What does the Euphrates River symbolize? This is the border between Israel and other nations. Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 7. Joshua chapter 1 verse 4. This is the borderline between the church and the world. It is a war that the four angels have caused. This is a war of religions and ideologies. Thus, the movement of the Antichrist appears. This is God's response to the appeals of martyrs. The four angels are beings who have been prepared to kill a third of mankind. The angels are released at the Euphrates River. Then there is a war. In addition, a third of mankind dies. A characteristic of this trumpet plague is that a third dies. It says this very hour and day and month and year. This represents God's planned time. When the time comes for God's plan to take place, it will most certainly take place. In this way, a religious war and movement of the Antichrist will take place in the future. Therefore, many people will die. Also, a war with the actual usage of weaponry may take place place in this world. A great war may actually occur in the vicinity of the Euphrates River. In the present, Israel and the Arab countries may go to war against each other. Thus, they may fight each other religiously. Verse 16. The number of the mounted troops was 200 million. 
It says that the number of the mounted troops was two hundred million. This represents a very frightening weapon. Two hundred million is a very large number. In addition, the mounted troops symbolize the people and organizations that are exploited in the fight. In the future, many soldiers worldwide will participate in this great war. Verse 17. The horses and riders I saw in my vision looked like this. Their breastplates were fiery red, dark blue, and yellow as sulfur. Verse 18. A third of mankind was killed by the three plagues of fire, smoke, and sulfur that came out of their mouths. Here the colors of their breastplates were fiery red, dark blue, and yellow like sulfur. The colors of the breastplates themselves seem frightening. These breastplates are used to protect themselves against the arrows of the enemy. They arm themselves with these breastplates. This also refers to being armed with the knowledge, greed, and stubbornness of humans. It symbolizes the hardening of the heart. Here there are three kinds of disasters. There appears a fiery red, a dark blue, and yellow like sulfur. It says that there are fiery red, dark blue, and sulfur yellow breastplates. In addition, the heads of the horses resembled the heads of lions. Fire, smoke, and sulfur came out of their mouths. Here, the fire, smoke, and sulfur are also three kinds of disasters. Many people will die as a result of these three kinds of disasters. To resemble lions refers to bloodthirstiness and fearlessness. In addition, it states that fire, smoke, and sulfur are released. This also symbolizes the great miracles that the devil will perform. The devil deceives humans through miracles. At times, the devil kills people like a lion with great powers. He also destroys. He deceives humans through miracles. This can also be said to be a frightening weapon that is used during war. For example, it is similar to a tank. It is similar to an armored vehicle. Bombs are released from there. Therefore, when bombs are released, fire, smoke, and sulfur appear. Since the olden days, sulfur was used to create bombs. This symbolizes a frightening war. Fire came out of these horses' mouths. This is the same as bombs that come out of tanks. There are bombings by planes. There are also bombings by tanks. 
Missiles are shot from ships. Guns shoot bullets. This symbolizes a great war that will arise through weapons such as these and the death of many people. Verse 19. The power of the horses was in their mouths and in their tails. For their tails were like snakes, having heads with which they inflict injury. Mouths symbolize the encouragement of false ideas and evil ideas. Tails symbolize false prophets. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 15. In this way, the devil propagates evil ideas through false prophets. They spread false teachings. They deceive people. Then eventually, people will die after being deceived by false ideologies. Verses 20 through 21. The rest of mankind that were not killed by these plagues still did not repent of the work of their hands. Among the fallen, there were still some who were not killed by the plagues. However, these people do not think to repent even after having seen these frightening plagues with their eyes. They do not turn from their detestable sins. These people continue to serve idols. They continue to serve demons. They continue to commit murder, perform magic arts, participate in sexual immorality, and commit theft. To murder is to kill and hate others. Magic arts refer to fortune telling. It is to perform witchcraft. In this way, these people will not return to God even after having seen great judgment and plagues. They do not repent. Therefore, faith in Jesus and repentance are all the grace of God. We must repent and return to God through various signs. In this way, a great war will arise through the sixth trumpet plague. A religious war, an ideological war will arise. In addition, as many as 200 million soldiers will gather in the vicinity of the Euphrates River and a great war will take place worldwide. We will continue our lecture with Revelation chapter 10. The title is The Angel of Prophecy. First, the sealing of what the seven thunders say. Verses 1 through 4. Second, the fulfillment of mystery, verses 5 through 7. Third, sweet in the mouth and sour in the stomach, verses 8 through 11. Read chapter 10, verse 1. Then I saw another mighty angel coming down from heaven. He was robed in a cloud with a rainbow above his head. His face was like the sun, 
and his legs were like fiery pillars. Here another mighty angel appears. This angel symbolizes Jesus as a prophetic messenger. He arrived with the word of God, in order to show the contents of the revelation. It says he was robed in a cloud, and came down from heaven. This is a preview of Jesus's second coming on a cloud. Daniel chapter seven verse thirteen, Revelation chapter one verse seven, Revelation chapter fourteen verse fourteen. This means that Jesus will return in magnificence and splendor in the air. Rainbow symbolizes God's covenant. Genesis chapter nine verse thirteen. Christ runs errands before God, after bringing the covenant of salvation. Here, God's covenant is God's word and revelation. It says His face was like the sun. This symbolizes the glory of God, chapter one, verse sixteen. The movement of salvation is one that reveals the glory of God. This is the light of the gospel, and the light of the righteousness of God. There is God's glory in the gospel. It says his legs were like fiery pillars. This symbolizes the judgment of God. God will use his words to judge the world. Verses two through three. He was holding a little scroll, which lay open in his hand. He planted his right foot on the sea, and his left foot on the land, and he gave a loud shout, like the roar of a lion. When he shouted, the voices of the seven thunders spoke. This little scroll symbolizes the Word of God, the Bible. It especially refers to the Book of Revelation, chapter five, verse one. It says he planted his right foot on the sea and his left foot on the land. This means that the Bible is God's word, that is applied to the sky, lands, seas, and to the entire universe. The word is applied to the entire universe. It is applied to the whole world. It is applied to the material world. The inner world and the spiritual world. Therefore, God judges according to His word, and also saves according to His word. He establishes according to His word, and preserves according to His word. This is written in chapter one, verses thirteen through sixteen. The one described in this passage is similar in appearance to Jesus. It says he gave a loud shout, like the roar of a lion. This represents majesty. Thus, this means that the word of God is great and has ability. Verse four. 
and when the seven thunders spoke, I was about to write, but I heard a voice from heaven say, "Seal up what the seven thunders have said, and do not write it down." Here the plagues of the seven thunders are about to be released. Then God says, "Do not write it down." He says to seal up what has been spoken. Why did God say this? It was because God wanted to remove the forthcoming disaster. Matthew chapter twenty-four, verse twenty-two. God is saying that He will not release the disaster of the thunders. God reduced this tribulation out of love and compassion. God only gives us temptations that we can bear. First Corinthians chapter ten, verse thirteen. God is a God who watches over us even during tribulations. Verses five through six. Then the angel I had seen standing on the sea and on the land raised his right hand to heaven. It says, "Who created? Our God is the Creator. Our God creates and brings judgment upon this sinful world." The angel said, "There will be no more delay." This means that there is not much time left. This means that time will run out. There is not much time remaining. It means that all things are near its end. God created all things. However, this sinful world will receive judgment before God. All things of this world must come to an end. Therefore, believers must stay awake and prepare. Verse seven. But in the days when the seventh angel is about to sound his trumpet, the mystery of God will be accomplished. There is the mystery of God. This mystery is the second coming of Jesus Christ. First Corinthians chapter fifteen, verse fifty-one. Jesus will come again, riding on a cloud, when God sounds the last trumpet. At that time, believers who died after believing in Jesus. Will be the first to be resurrected. Then the believers who are alive when Jesus returns will not die, but will be changed into spiritual bodies. Believers who have died will rise first, and then believers who are alive will be transformed. Then all will rise up in spiritual bodies to meet Jesus in the air. First Thessalonians chapter four, verses thirteen through eighteen. Unbelievers do not understand this because this is a mystery. Therefore, those who know God are blessed. Those who know the mystery of God are blessed. Matthew chapter eleven verse twenty-five. Therefore, we must prepare our faith. We must eagerly anticipate Jesus's second coming. Verse eight. 
Then the voice that I had heard from heaven spoke to me once more. It says, Take the scroll that lies open in the hand of the angel. God's word was given to believers through the angel. God allowed the scroll to remain opened so that believers could know. We believers must fully recognize and understand the Word of God. Our faith must grow. We must be prepared to welcome the second coming of the Lord. This scroll refers to the entire Bible and it also refers to the book of Revelation. Verses 9 through 10. So I went to the angel and asked him to give me the little scroll. He said to me, Take it and eat it. I took the little scroll from the angel's hand and ate it. It tasted as sweet as honey in my mouth, but when I had eaten it, my stomach turned sour. The angel said to take the scroll and eat it. This means to receive and eat the Word of God. We must ingest the Word of God as nourishment for our souls. That is how our souls can live. Therefore, we must desire the Word of God. We must receive the sweet and profound words. We must take them in as nourishment for our souls. Here it says that it tasted as sweet as honey in my mouth. The Word of God tastes as sweet as honey in the mouth. Psalm chapter 119 verse 103. It is the grace of God that His Word tastes sweet to our souls. Psalm chapter 19 verse 10. When we hear the Word of God, we must accept it as words that are sweet and profound. When we read the Bible, the Word must become grace. We must constantly desire the words of the Bible and desire to learn. The Word of God must become nourishment for our souls. Then we will gain strength as well as true satisfaction and life. However, it says that it was sour in the stomach. This means that there are opposing forces within our hearts whenever we try to obey the Word of God. There are sinful natures in us. The Word of God and the sinful natures of the flesh are incompatible. The sinful natures within us are what drives us to go against the Word. Therefore, there is an internal fight. The old self and the new self fight against each other. Hence, there is pain in the stomach. Galatians chapter 5 verse 17 It is difficult to be formed by the Word of God. There is suffering. Still, we must take up the cross deny ourselves and endure. We must follow the Lord. 
There will come a time when it will become life when we continue to obey. We must continue to receive and eat the word of God, even if it may be sour in the stomach. The spirit must grow. It must consume solid food. Hebrews chapter 5 verses 13 and 14 There will be physical suffering. However, we must endure, obey, and keep the word as nourishment for the soul. Also, there may be bitterness in our environments. There are forces that go against and persecute us when we try to obey the word. When we attempt to walk down the narrow path, those who walk down the wide path continuously persecute us. This is what it means to be sour in the stomach. Even then, we must not back out. Even then, we must hold on to the word and obey it until the end. Then the word will overcome and become life. Verse 11 Then I was told, you must prophesy again about many peoples, nations, languages, and kings. This refers to the events that will happen when the seventh trumpet is sounded. Specifically, this is a prophecy that is revealed in chapter 11, verse 15. Therefore, we must now strive to take in the word and gain strength for our souls. We must not only hold on to this for ourselves, but spread the word to others as well. It says to prophesy again about many peoples, nations, languages, and kings. We must evangelize to all peoples. We must evangelize to everyone. Matthew chapter 28 verses 19 through 20. John chapter 10 verse 9. We must spread the word to all peoples. We must deliver the message to the ends of the earth. We must spread the word whether we have the chance to or don't. We must preach the word whether the other person listens or not. Then our spirits will live. We must dedicate ourselves to the mission of prophecy. This prophecy is to testify to Jesus and evangelize. God gave us the mission to evangelize. We must make sacrifices and work hard to fulfill this mission of evangelism. We will now conclude our ninth lecture on Revelation.